Greetings, one and all. So, let me guess. You've picked up a copy of NHL 19, chosen your favourite game mode, jumped into a game, and you can't seem to score any goals? Well, have no fear, ladies and gentlemen. This British Hockey Channel is here to assist you as I present to you the five best ways to score in NHL 19. Before we begin, I would just like to mention that whilst these scoring techniques are some of the most successful and effective ways to score in the game, none of these methods have a 100% success rate. There is no cheat code to this game to guarantee a goal every time you make the same move, and there will be times where you don't score using these moves. But using these methods will help you rack up those goals in no time. But now that's out of the way, let's get started, shall we? The first method we have is the forehand backhand cheese. This has been my go-to move on the breakaway for the last few NHL games, and I have scored countless goals with this over the years due to its simplicity and high success rate. All you have to do is make your player skate towards the right goalie post if they are a left-handed shot, and the left goalie post if they are a right-handed shot. As you reach the hash marks between the face-off circles, move the puck to the player's forehand via the skill stick, then move the puck to the player's backhand as you reach the crease. From there, simply move the right stick up to take the shot and score the goal. This has such a high success rate because the opposing goalie will either fall for the forehand deke and be out of position to try and make the save, or he will attempt to make a desperation save, which more often than not won't be enough to stop the puck from going into the net. Just remember that the side of the net you skate to first and the control for the forehand and backhand differs dependent on the player's handedness. You always want to make sure the puck is on the player's forehand first and the backhand second in order to ensure an easy goal. Next, we have the short side snipe. Even though I have seen a slight drop in its effectiveness in this year's title compared to NHL 18, it still remains as one of the most popularly used and effective scoring methods in this game. This technique works well when you are skating into the offensive zone on the rush and you want to get a shot past the opposing team's defenseman covering you or when you have extended time in the offensive zone and all of your other scoring options are being blocked by the opposing team. To score a short side snipe, all you have to do is skate into the offensive zone with the shooter towards the right side of the ice if you're a left-handed shot and the left if you are a right-handed shot. Then, as you reach the face-off circle, move your player towards the other side of the net, hold the puck on your player's forehand with the skill stick, and shoot the puck towards the top corner of the side of the ice you are skating away from. This move works best when you can see the goaltender beginning to move away from the post to follow you moving across the ice, as it will open up more room at the top of the net for you to pot that puck and find twine. However, be aware that all you need to do to stop this method is to put a player or a stick in the shooting lane to block the incoming shot, meaning the chance is shut down immediately. So keep an eye on how much open ice your shooter has and your positioning on the ice when you are trying to score or trying to stop someone scoring on you with this method. Next up is the cross crease snipe. This move has gained a lot of infamy over the last few NHL games for its high rate of success and somewhat overuse by many players online. However, from what I have played so far, the defensive AI has become somewhat better at recognising and shutting down cross-crease opportunities. That said, if timed right, this still remains an effective way to score goals. This technique can be used to score on the rush with varied levels of success, but this scoring method is best executed when your team has established puck possession in the offensive zone. This play requires one player on one side of the net as the passer, and one player on the other side of the net as the shooter. All you need to do is pass the puck across the crease to the shooter with the pass button, and move the right stick up as soon as the puck reaches the shooter. This will cause the shooter to shoot the puck without stopping to take possession, meaning he fires a hard and fast one-time shot towards the net. The cross-crease snipe is tough for goaltenders to stop, as it requires them to move from one side of the net to the other to track the puck almost instantaneously, whilst also being positioned correctly to stop the heavy shot heading towards him. This is often not humanly possible, even for the best goaltenders to pull off, which means that regardless of which team or goalie you are up against, you have a chance to find twine. To maximise the effectiveness of this technique, ensure that the shooter is on his off wing, so a left-handed shot is on the right side of the net, and a right-handed shot is on the left side. 
Being on the off wing means that the shooter can position himself to put more power behind the shot, which means the puck travels to the net quicker and means the goalie has less time to react. You can score with the shooter on his natural side of the ice, but the shooter will likely redirect or push the puck to the net rather than putting power behind it and shooting it, which results in a weaker, less effective shot with a lower success rate. Also, it is important to mention that this technique is one of the easiest to identify as the defence, since you can see the two players setting up on either side of the net, with the passer often skating in circles waiting for the right time to pass. And it is the easiest to stop, as all you need is a stick or a body in the passing lane to completely halt this technique. So keep that in mind when you're trying to set up or stop this method from being used against you. Penultimately, we have the around the net tuck. This technique is one of the tougher ones to pull off on this list because there are more factors that could go wrong, but it's still a good way to surprise your opponent and it adds some more variety to your goal scoring techniques. This play is to be used when you are set up in the offensive zone and your opponent's defense is out of position so there is no one standing in front of the net. All you have to do is skate behind the net from left to right if you are a right handed shot and right to left if you are a left handed shot. As you move from the back of the net to the front, hold the protect the puck button, A on Xbox and the X button on PS4, and carry on skating around the net as if you are skating in a circle. As you reach the far post, simply let go of the protect the puck button, aim the puck towards the top corner of the net, and move the right stick up to shoot the puck. This technique is most effective when the goalie follows you from one side of the net to the other in the butterfly position, as it means the top of the net is left exposed for your shot. However, there are several factors that can impact the effectiveness of this method. Skating so close to the goalie means that you are vulnerable to being pushed off the puck by the goalie's pad, or even poke checked off the puck by the goalie, which will stop you in your tracks. Also, if you try this when a defenseman is close enough to the crease, your player will likely be crushed with an open ice hit, so make sure you attempt this move when there is enough space between the defenseman and the goal that you have time to pull off this move. And last, but certainly not least, we have the low pad rebound. Now, I've seen a noticeable dip in the effectiveness of this method compared to last year's game, but it still works as a strong secondary scoring technique if done correctly to add another weapon to your goal scoring arsenal. This play is used when you are breaking into the zone on the rush and requires one left-handed player and one right-handed player. The player with the puck is the initial shooting player and the other is the player who shoots on the rebound. Each player needs to be skating on their natural wing in order for this to work, so the left-handed player is on the left side of the ice and the right-handed player is on the right. To pull this off, both players need to be skating on their natural wing into the offensive zone at roughly the same speed. The rebound shooter can be a stride behind, but the more similar the two players are in speed, the better. With the initial shooter, aim a shot towards the goalie's leg pad on the opposite side of the net by moving the left stick to the bottom right as you are shooting with a left-handed shot or the bottom right for a right-handed shot. The goalie will often kick the puck to the other side of the zone with his pad, which is where your rebound shooter is positioned. With the rebound shooter now in possession of the puck, aim the puck towards the open space in the net and shoot. This method can be better than others on this list when the opposing team has one or both defensemen skating backwards to cover your breakout on the rush, as you are pulling the goaltender out of position with the initial kick save and getting the puck across to your teammate without sending it horizontally to be picked off by the defenseman. However, the most important factor in this technique is the goaltender kicking the puck out towards the rebound shooter. If the goaltender doesn't create a big enough rebound, or the rebound doesn't land in the right place, this play immediately breaks down. So just make sure that the shot is made to the correct pad for the player's handedness, and both players are in the right position to ensure that this method has the highest possible success rate. And there you go! Those are the 5 best ways to score in NHL 19. What do you think about these scoring methods? Are they good? bad or do you have a better way to score let me know in the comments below i'd love to hear what you guys think but thank you very much for watching guys i hope you have enjoyed please feel free to like subscribe share or watch some of my other videos thank you very much for watching and goodbye